teach it to people <laughs> make it accountable for them. So but just let me know. Are you going on or should we like yeah, I think we're we're about ready. Yeah, you can go ahead and start Melissa. All right. So my name is Melissa Bark and I have been teaching body language now. Um I should have let's see. 2013 is when I started teaching. Uh, I discovered that there's a lot to do with body language when I experimented for a week to see how many dates I could get after not going on a date for like nine months. And then I decided to experiment with it and I found out that, wow, I actually got a lot more dates just by um, uh, experimenting with it. So. Anyway, I uh, now am kind of breaking into families and marriage, and I've been teaching dating body language for the past, um, let's see, so since 2014, I really got into dating body language, and so that's been really fun, and I've had a pretty good success rate with my clients, <laughs> with them being able to take the next step of wherever they are. Um, I've had some that were beauty queens, and they um, were just attracting the wrong type of guys. And then I've had other guys that would take all these girls out on dates, and they just wouldn't ever get a second date. And then other women that were 30 and never held hands with a guy. And so, and I've helped all ranges of people. So, um, if you guys have more questions about dating, just let me know. But I'm today I'm just kind of focusing on the basics. Um, so here's my little whiteboard because my computer's broken and I couldn't make a <laughs> slideshow. But I just wanted you guys to see. So body language makes up, they say about 50 to 60, sometimes even more, of our communication. And tone and then the actual words we make up actually is like the least amount of yeah, the least percentage of communication that we use on a daily basis. And so with body language, um, if you, I want you guys to start thinking about yourself and then also those around you and what you can do. This, is, this class is mostly to bring awareness to you and to help you start recognizing in yourself and then in those close to you what's going on. Uh, body language isn't something that you say, oh, hey, you just scratched your ear. Like, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> and it's not like that. It, body language, noticing it, and then um, thinking about it, it's an opportunity to ask questions. To ask questions like, why is she folding her arms? Why did my kid just stick his hands in his pockets when I asked him where this is? Um, and they're all different things that help us dig a little deeper. And then for yourself, you can say, okay, am I making eye contact with my kids today? Am I holding on, like holding back? Are my shoulders slumped? Like what, what's going on with your own body language and how can you make a difference in your body language to help make a difference to all of those around you? So just for an example today, my girls kind of woke up so I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old little girl and then a six-month-old little boy. And so the girls woke up and they were kind of feeling down. I could tell that right away because I think that they are picking up on some of the stresses I've been feeling. And so I decided to have hug time. And I actually experimented on them a little bit and just to see like which raised their energy level and which raised which... Um, behavior for myself helps them get past their grumpiness. <laughs> so I started out like, hey, give me a hug. And it was, so I call this T-Rex arms, where you're, you keep this part of your arm stuck to your side, and you talk with your hands, and you're just kind of like, eh. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, and I, especially in dating, I tell them not to do that. Because, and especially, and I think, now that I'm a mom, I notice it with kids, they're not going to be as open with you if you're not as open with them. And being open to them is just having a little bit of space. It's right there. I know it sounds kind of weird, but just being a little bit more open helps them feel safe. And
and help them feel like you're going to be open with them. So with my girls this morning, I was like, hey, girls, you want a hug? And then they were like, okay, and then gave me a hug. And it was just kind of, it wasn't that exciting. But then I said, okay, girls, who wants a big hug? And then that raised their energy so much. And it raised the energy in our home. It raised the energy in our relationship. And it helps everyone in our home just feel that much better. And so I recommend um, paying attention to where, what you're doing. Are your arms tucked in all the time? Are you closed off when you're talking to your kids? Um, and ask yourself, maybe you're folding your arms because you're cold. Um, maybe you're not trying to be closed off, but maybe you are. Um, ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why are my arms folded all the time when I'm talking to people? And what would happen if I just raised my arms, put my arms out a little bit more when I talk to people? And see what happens. And then um, another big thing, so I'm gonna give you guys a tool to do at home. So we talked about arms. If you have them open a little bit more, and with women, it actually helps if you slow down your movement and make it a little bit more flowy. That raises your feminine energy and helps people trust your feminine instincts. Um, but if you're if you're a woman and you're just like, hey, go, let's go, let's go, let's go, and like really crazy with your arms, it actually um, creates a more masculine energy within you, and people will start to treat you more male. So that's something good to know about that. And then. Um, with your children, make sure you're open. Make sure your shoulders are back when you're talking to them. If you use your arms um, to talk, then just try to open it a little bit more. And you can also do directive, kind of subliminal messaging with your arms. So like, wow, you're so beautiful today. And if you open your arms and you direction toward that person, they will actually receive it a lot better than if you, oh, wow, you're looking so cute today. Um, it, it's a lot more receivable if you open yourself up to it. So the next thing is a um, exercise with eye contact. So a lot of times I hear parents, and I've done that myself, like you're getting mad with your kids or something, you're like, hey, will you just look at me? Will you just look at me in the eyes? <laughs> and a lot of times when they don't look at you, they're feeling a lack of connection. So if you, and a lot of people sometimes, well, there are quite a few people in the world that just feel like they are disconnected from the world. They're disconnected from everyone. And so their eye contact in general just isn't that great. So an exercise you can do with someone you trust is um, <laughs> let me grab my oh I grabbed it on mark just one foot so and I forgot my eraser <laughs> so you just get a blank piece of paper it's a really simple exercise and you're going to write or draw a dot and a dot and this represents each of the eyes and you're going to do crosshairs over it okay and you're going to set a timer for about um, two minutes, and one person has the job or the job of talking about themselves, and the other person is going to have a piece of paper, that piece of paper, in front of them, and be completely silent. So, for example, if I was talking to you and I had the paper, and I or, and I said, okay, I'm gonna set the timer, raise that go, then you have to talk to your, talk about yourself positively for two minutes, and then each time. You made an eye movement I would go for example and I would label this your left side and your right side so the opposite of whatever you are and then I would just go oh you went up you went down and I would just do these scribbles and what happens a lot of times is someone will favor one um, quadrant of their face and so Try that with someone that you care about, just to see where your eye contact is and if you feel comfortable talking about yourself. And uh, a good rule with eye contact is to keep eye contact until you feel kind of getting uncomfortable, then break, and then come back. Uh, you don't want to be like, hi, 
I am totally good at eye contact. And you don't want to like stare them down and make them feel uncomfortable. But what you do want to do is let them know that they're important to you and that they've got your attention. And if your kids are want, like bugging you a lot, try just giving them some solid eye contact for just a few minutes. Um, so after you do this with your um, person that you trust, that you're close with, um, just uh, something that you can think about. So downwards, some people say, it, I don't know, there's a lot of things out there, but I like to think of any downward direction is feelings, okay? So when people look down, they're often trying to remember a feeling or to feel how, they, or to discern how they feel about something. So they're looking inward. A lot of times when people look up, they are looking for a new idea or an inspiration. And so you can actually take control of that. And if you are looking for new ideas and new inspiration, start looking up more. Um, I remember seeing a speaker that I really admire, um, Jeffrey R. Holland, and he, right before he spoke, he sat up there and he went down, and then he looked up. And he looked down, and he looked up for like 10 minutes. He just kept doing that over and over again. And I thought that was really interesting because I had just learned about this and I thought, okay, he's trying to like turn his feelings and then look for inspiration. Do that for yourself. And then also, um, can you guys still hear me? Sorry, my, okay. <laughs> my screen just did something weird. Um, so that's something you can do. And then also, this is, not 100% true, but oftentimes the right side is um, with the future and the left side is with the past. And so it's kind of interesting if you are thinking about which way your eyes are going, um, but also looking at people, you can be like, oh, like, and someone's talking about the past and they're looking to the left a lot. You can be like, oh, well, what are you thinking about? What are you feeling about? What happened? And it, it gives you an ability to connect better. So brings awareness, and then awareness brings, um, well, what, it's up to you. What, that aware, what you do with that awareness, it's up to you. You can either ask better questions and get some more information, or you can just be like, oh, well, she's got her own problems and just, <laughs> but I would encourage you to ask better questions and not just like point it out or be weird about it. <laughs> so, all right, and then the next thing I wanted so is everyone good on that? Anyone have any questions about eye contact? Um, so that's just a simple exercise. I encourage you all to try it. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. This and then, is so cool, Melissa. I'm loving this. <laughs> okay, awesome. So cool. So cool. you said up means inspiration. So when Jeffrey Holland was looking up, he was just like, okay, inspiration. And okay. And then looking down, feelings, the discerning. Okay. figuring out how you feel cool this is, this is so fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah if any of y'all have uh questions just let me know um so and then the next thing i've felt guided to talk about is your children and teenagers and those around you um i want you guys to think about what kind of body language or body like your physical contact they are missing out on right now because they're not at school and make sure you are giving those hugs, giving those that eye contact, giving that attention somehow, because um, a lot of youth right now, and I think a lot of teenagers and young people in general, their reality sometimes is hard like to discern their reality from the future, and so they feel like their their current reality is their future. And so they get can get depressed, they can get really anxious. So take a minute to try to connect with them. And I'm gonna teach you one of the best hugs. So they tell you, or some experts say that the best hugs are eight seconds long. And I'm gonna give you a tip. So as you're hugging someone, breathe deep. Breathe deep to, into those hugs. Because when they feel you move, it activates something inside of them and lets them know that like, 
they want, like you are willing to absorb them in some way. And if you are single, it's a really great hug to get someone interested <laughs> anyway. Um, so give a hug, breathe deep. If you can, eight second hugs. I really encourage that. And it, so eight second hugs, eight times a day for your kids. And that, and if you have two kids, that means 16 hugs for you. So That's a lot of hugging. <laughs> I am so not a hugger. <laughs> so that might be good for me. <laughs> yeah. And I, I know that a lot of people struggle with that, but I want you to think, are any of your kids huggers? I don't have kids. So oh. I, I, if anyone wants to come offline and say if they are or not, but um, yeah, because I know there's all types of people, and they, some people are huggers and some people aren't. Yeah, um, I've I've wondered how if you have other you'll probably maybe you're about to say more, but because some people are amazing huggers, like you just feel like in their arms and wrapped up, and I've wondered what exactly it is. Maybe it's the breath. Sometimes like your clavicle pokes into them or like I wonder if a skinny person can give a really good hug if it's a matter of concaving yourself a little bit right there or you know like yeah any more tips <laughs> so I <can> be <laughs> <better> hugger. <laughs> yeah I think a lot of it is what are your thoughts around hugs and I was actually that actually leads right into my next area of your body language comes out um whatever body language you have it's evidence of what's going on in your brain. So if you are sitting there talking to your kids and you're like, you know what, like this, 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 and you're doing this action, I want you guys just raise your hand or hit the hand, raise your hand thing. If you guys think this is a negative body language move. <laughs> and so this, sometimes we um, can start doing negative body language moves, pushing away, chopping, you, I did this, and you poking, and um, there's a lot of negative body language moves out there, and make sure, like, you could say, okay, you guys, you need to get to bed right now, and if you think of that, like, a lot of times, kids will interpret that, like, you're trying to push them down, <laughs> and you're trying to make them submit, and when you, add negative body language moves that it's going to either like make them feel oppressed like you're the dictator or they're going to feel like a uh, rebellion <laughs> so it's not going to help you anymore. and so pay attention to your own body language moves um especially like i've seen women say like you know what like i love going on dates dating is so much fun and <laughs> then i'm like oh who do you want to punch <laughs> and so and it's really funny and you have to but not funny because i'm like oh you've got a lot of issues huh but <laughs> it's interesting because i can ask more questions and like well what do you like about dating what do you not like about dating or, and then you can talk to your kids and see and if they stick their hands in their pockets like ask some more questions any one body language move doesn't mean one thing it can mean a myriad of things um, but ask the questions to find out what's going on and it's going to be really helpful for you so um okay your thoughts it's really important to start an awareness of your negative and positive thoughts. And sometimes, like, I'm just gonna teach you one tool. Some, so, um, when you have negative thoughts, usually they create a spiral of neg negative thoughts and you just kind of spiral down. And if you are in that spiral and you just can't break it, take three minutes, go write it out, and then rip it up burn it, flush it in the toilet, <laughs> whatever you want to do. If it's like 10 pages, don't flush it. But if you <laughs> have just one page, just rip it up and throw it away. Burning it's really good um, because there's something with uh, materializing your thoughts and allowing that to be physical. So you're saying, okay, now my thoughts are physically represented right now and I can let it go. 
and you can get rid of it. And then um, if you have some reoccurring negative thoughts, like we're gonna go pretty basic here. Um, we're gonna do five, okay? So I want you to take another piece of paper. You're gonna draw a line down the middle. I know it's kind of bright. And then on this side, you're gonna do negative thoughts and then write your top five negative thoughts that you're having. We're gonna go pretty basic, like maybe I, I am ugly. Um, and then, or I'm too stupid to get this done. Uh, anyway, so you get the idea. We're gonna just do two, <laughs> um, but do do at least five. And then on the opposite side of this, I want you to do a double positive opposite and something physical about your body that you like because when you attack yourself mentally like through your thoughts like i'm not good enough i am not pretty enough i am not smart enough things like that when you like, are saying negative things about yourself you are distancing your spirit from your body in a way and you your spirit feels offended and your body feels offended and so what we're trying to do with these positive affirmations is bring them back together. So, so for example, I am ugly. So what's a double positive opposite for that? We could say, I am super beautiful. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't think of a, good, <laughs> I don't know, super, superheroes. I'm thinking on that wavelength because that's what my girls do all the day long. <laughs> So I am super beautiful. Um, and amazing. And my eyes sparkle. Okay. And then you so you write that down. And then you write for the next one, I'm too stupid. You, you can write something, and I don't want you to just write the opposite of that, like, I'm not stupid. That's, stupid. we want some positive words. So I want you to write things like, I am brilliant and I have a unique way of thinking about things. And my arms are super strong. So I, I hope that makes sense. So take a negative thought that is reoccurring, write it down, create a double positive opposite with a physical attachment of something awesome about your body and this is something that's totally yours so you can do it however you want so if you want to say like and my legs are amazing or anyway you can get really creative <laughs> um, I know that there's some young minds here so I'm not gonna go too crazy but um, and then once you're done with that I want you to take that sheet rip it in half take or cut it in half if you're worried about ripping the good ones and then you're gonna take the negative ones and throw them in the garbage rip them up flush them in the toilet burn them whatever you choose to do and then use those positive ones as your new declarations because as you start focusing on those positive words about yourself then your body language will change and also your thoughts will gravitate toward more positive things in your life so to kind of recap what we've talked about using your arms try to make sure they're not always stuck to your side crossed um, open yourself up a little bit and you'll be surprised who opens up to you next eye contact try to keep eye contact with those that you talk with don't stare them down but try to pay attention and then practice eye contact with that exercise I told you about and see what happens and see what you do and remember some basics about eye contact up inspiration down feelings or um, discernment and then right future left possibly the past so um those are just some basic ways of thinking about which way your eye, yeah which way your eyes are going and then um hugging eight second hugs <laughs> or um, eight, eight times a day and just breathe in and slow it down. Um, 
try to slow down the hug as much as you can because that makes a difference too. To, yeah, slowing down the hug, making sure your arms are open too. Like if, yeah, if you're like, oh, hey, let's give a hug, then that person can tell you're not really, like you just want to give a T-Rex hug. <laughs> and so they don't want to hug a T-Rex. <laughs> they want to hug a big, I don't know, whatever you want to <laughs> say, but they don't want to hug a T-Rex. And then um, with your thoughts, I feel like, oh, and teenagers, keep an eye on them, especially any teens in your life. Make sure they're, they know that um, their future is bright and things like this happen every once in a while. Not for a long time, but people live through them and we can become stronger depending on what we focus on right now. And so get rid of those negative thoughts, build up your positive thoughts, say them to yourself out loud. Um, the reason why I said burn the negative stuff is because the more senses we can activate when we're getting rid of negative and building up positive, then the more it's gonna internalize within us. So, um, my, for example, when I was still young and dating, I would have my declarations or affirmations and then I'd have some music going and I would have the music and I would say my declarations and I'd put my perfume on right then, right then and then it would be really like activating as many senses as I could while internalizing these words. So, are there any questions, any ideas that you'd like to share about what you've learned about body language in your life? Anybody? I'll say. Hi. Yeah, Amy, go ahead. Oh, you're on mute again. Okay, go again. Okay. Go ahead. So what does it what does it mean if a person has terrible eye contact? What what does that like indicate? So that's where this class right now, like my main purpose is teaching you body language so you can raise your awareness. So okay. you're like, okay, she doesn't he or she doesn't have great eye contact. Ask some questions. And mm -hmm. then a lot of times it's because they feel like they're not worthy of connection a lot of times, or they don't, or a connection makes them feel uncomfortable. So it could be a lot of different reasons. Like I've worked with people that just didn't have <laughs> the ability to keep eye contact for more than like half a second. Yeah. And then after working with them, they put that intention of creating eye contact and opening themselves up. And a lot of times it was self-esteem issues, but that's, it's totally individual too. Like you have to ask questions and find out what's going on. It might be trauma. It might be, it might be self-esteem yeah you have to find out so, any okay. other questions but i yeah if i were you and you have someone that you care about and love just try well, to uh, my son he's on the autism spectrum and it's a real struggle for like every time he talks i have to tell him look at me you know and um and i don't want to make it uncomfortable for him because i know he just does it but i also want to teach him that when you speak to somebody it's good if you look at them, you know, and not just you're talking, but it might just be looking off anywhere. Like it's almost like he's gathering his thoughts and he's like just focused on trying to think of what yeah. he's going to, you know, and, and, so, and that might be it. Like he might, and you say that he's on the autism spectrum and that might be his thing is it takes a little bit longer to gather his thoughts. And so it's hard to keep that eye contact. And just like we talked about with eye contact, Move, when you move your eyes, you are, it's almost like you're retrieving things from your brain when you move your yeah. eyes in this direction, so. But I think people don't understand it, and so they'll interpret it, him as being rude or, um, yeah. and you know. And you can, I would just defend him. If you think he was being rude, then you can call him out on it. You don't but, say, but you just but, know that. But if people do this, that, and you can just say, you know what, he he's doing his best, and he's just thinking hard about how to respond to you and but yeah i've actually i need to study that a little bit more so okay anyone else have any questions um, 
Where are you trying going? to come up yet? We can hear you. I am now. trying to come up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure which button. Do, I'm not used to doing my phone. You. I can hear you. Well, you can hear me. Um, I just want to put a shout out for the, um, the write and burn. Um, a lot of times our youth or children just don't want to talk about things. They don't want to, um, uh, they, they just don't want to use the words verbally, but they have so much pent up in them that they need an, a, a way to get rid of all the yuck inside of their head and in their heart sometimes. And we actually got a number 10 can and that's what we, and we put holes in the bottom and they could write, they could, and then they go shred up the paper and burn it. And when they walked away, they just were like, whew, okay, I feel so much better. And, um, yeah, and it, just it, to it plug has, in for, huge one. And just to plug in for burning, so it does activate the sense of smell. So that helps with the whole process of letting it go. And if you have really little kids, just ask them to write out the yuckies <laughs> and just scribble out the yuckies. And so if they are having a hard time, just say like, I want you to just scribble out all your mad and all your anger and all your grumpy and just scribble it out and then we're gonna go get rid of it. And so you can do that with your kids that are younger. And those that are older, they can write out their thoughts and feelings. And, yeah. and I would also, when you are doing the write and burn, I would just, if you are gonna just do one sheet, I would just start out with like, I feel this emotion. Um, because so for example I feel anger because and I would just write it out and and then just write as much as you can and then I would start it over again I feel anger because and da, 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 da. I feel anger because and then go until you feel like you've gotten it all and then go torch it so yeah I'm gonna add something you know like with little kids even sometimes as teenagers they may not be able to put it in words and it is perfectly fine for them to scribble until it's all out because we still have that little kid in us somewhere. Definitely. Thank you. Did you have anything else, sir? Okay. Any other questions or? Hey, I have a question. Yes. First, hi, Melissa. Hey, how are you, Marie? I'm good. So I just want to see that chart you did in the beginning. I was really interested in that. Oh, the. The body um, language, tone, whatever else you had. Okay. Well, I erased it. Hold on one second. Yeah. As, and as you're doing that, I'll ask another question just to okay. complicate your life. Okay. Um, so is this a, a lot of what you learned from, is it, um, I'm kind of learning about NLP, like neuro linguistics programming. Is that something that you've studied and learned about? So I have heard about it from other people that have studied it so in an indirect way yes <laughs> but oh, okay um there there are a lot of coaches out there that um i've gone to and they've studied that so okay, but you just kind of gathered things from other sources just yeah. all over okay yes i do need to study that a little bit more so okay so what i had was i just had a circle and so they say about 50 to 60 percent is body language okay so and this is communication all right so 50 to 60 percent is body language and then um so it's not quite half but more is i can't remember the exact percentage and i don't want to try to do math right now because it's not going to work but more of this other space is tone and then the other space is the actual words that you say. Um, they often say the words is, I guess, about 15 to 20%. So if you want to do the math on that one, like if the words that you're saying are only about 15 to 20% of what people are receiving, make sure that they match. Because you could say like, oh yeah, I love my brother or yes i love my job or you can say oh yeah it's just been so much fun and you can just okay what does this look like it looks like a saw you're like sawing off your hand like 
it's it's not fun like something's going on and then you don't like there's something going on with your brother and so pay attention to your body language and try to pay or fix that first before you and don't yeah don't try to fix anybody else's body language but if you're you can always say, hey, I know this girl, Melissa, she's really good at coaching body language. Maybe you should give her a call if you want, but <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that either. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. But do you guys have any other questions? Thank you, Melissa. This is amazing. Okay. Uh, I do free consultations that are about 30 to 45 minutes if anyone does want to pick my brain about what I have studied. So you can just message me on Facebook. Melissa so we'll be play, posting this playback in the Famdemic group um, under the announcement of her post and under, I'm collecting all of them together. And so it'll probably be pinned at the top of the Facebook group pretty soon on the original announcement with the whole schedule for the next two weeks. So thanks everyone okay. for attending. All right. And were there any questions in the chat? I just keep seeing it light up. No. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Um, for those, we do have meditation at six thirty with Cody. So it'll be a beginning meditation. Kind of, hit. he's an incredible brain wellness guy. So we want to jump on. He'll be doing two, one this week and then one next week too. If you want to jump on that one. So, thanks everyone. Good to see you. Uh, thanks so thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Loved it. Thanks, Jumping Lisa. on. <laughs> thank you guys. It was good to see y'all. Thank you.